When you guys kind of, I guess, came out of stealth, the response was absolutely ginormous. The, the demo video in the millions and millions of views and your name was everywhere. I just want to know in the first instance what that's been like for yeah. the last few weeks and months. Absolutely. And first of all, thank you so much for having me. I mean, it's, it's, it's been crazy. Um, no, it's been, it's been wild ever since the launch. And I, I think, um, you know, we've seen a real, real need in the market um, for this kind of technology. There's the, the gaming use case, which I'm going to get right to. I'm a massive gamer. I don't know what you're playing right now, but I, I just started playing Resident Evil 4 <laughs> Remake on PlayStation. And I bring that up as an illustrative example that making video games, the, the creation timeline is very frustrating for fans. That seems to be something that you think you can help with uh, from the engineering perspective. Yeah, yeah. So we've seen our customers use Devon for all sorts of different use cases, um, you know, full stack engineering, data analysis, uh, code migration. Um, and I think in particular, we've seen um, a lot of real use in some of these real tedious, repetitive tasks that are often taking human engineers a lot of time. And so, you know, we have, we have companies who are doing thousand hour projects that are now moving five times faster with the help of Devon. Scott, it feels, therefore, that you're in the we're augmenting humans camp rather than replacing them. But how much anxiety have you seen, have you talked about, of that this is going to replace people? Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I think, you know, we're all engineers ourselves by training um, at Cognition. And, uh, you know, even ourselves, we use Devon all the time when we're building Devon. Um, and there's really so much more, um, what, what we see all the time is that there's just so much more to build. You know, um, and we think the heart of software engineering is this deep logical problem solving, and you know we want to be able to help people do more and more of that, and and have to focus a little bit less on some of the implementation and the debugging and and all of these other, these other details. I loved how Ed articulated basically the firestorm you created when you came out of stealth, and much what caught the attention was the money going in, twenty one million dollars from the likes of Peter Thiel's venture fund, but also the fact that there were so few of you. Just 10 in your team. How is that scaled? What are you looking to do in terms of continuing to grow? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, I mean, I, I think we're, we're still very, very early, and there's a lot more to do. Um, we've been looking to grow our team, um, you know, with really great technical talent um, from both New York and the Bay Area. And, uh, yeah, we're continuing to, to scale up and get it out to as many customers as we can. Okay, let's go there, New York and the Bay Area. What is it that New York offers you in terms of talent? What does the Bay Area, how are you thinking about being decentralized or having headquarters in certain places? Yeah, I, I think both are honestly great. Um, a lot of our team, you know, we have a lot of our team from New York and we have a lot of our team from the Bay Area as well. Um, and I think um, we've seen that, that having access to talent from, from both locations has been amazing for us. Part of the um, exploration of Ashley Vance's story about you guys, it kind of lifted the lid on cognition, was um, some mystery about how you did it, how you made so much progress. Um, I'm, I'm not a, a, a computer scientist or a software engineer, but was this a case of you guys building your own large language model or uh, building on top of other people's large language models? Just give me the basics of why your thing works. Yeah, so Devon is an autonomous agent, and what that means is that Devon is able to use all the same tools that a human would use. And so, you know, if you think about going through a debugging process or, or building a website or things like that. You know, you're going to be writing code, but at the same time, you're also going to be running code, you're going to be running tests, maybe browsing the, re the web, reading documentation, all the same you know, tools that, that a human would use. And um, we specifically built Devon to be able to work with those tools and iterate on top of that. Could we talk about money? You know, in the piece, it says you raised $21 million uh, through Peter Thiel. Um, and Founders Fund, that doesn't seem like very much when you consider compute costs. Are you revenue generating so you can support yourselves or are you going to have to find some more cash? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, we, we actually, um, we closed another round just last month. Um, just last month? Which, which, yeah, yeah, and to, to bring in a little Tell bit more. Tell us about capital. it. We, we raised $175 million, um, from from a few different funds, primarily from Founders Fund, um, Kosla, and Alad Gill. Um, Would you be comfortable disclosing the valuation-ish? Um, yeah, the valuation was around $2 billion. $2 billion. Uh, um, Sorry, I interrupted. Keep no, going. no, yeah. So, so, you know, obviously a lot of really, really great names, and it's, we're, we're super excited to have, um, have such, such great investors at the table. But, um, yeah, as you said, you know, I think this money gives us uh, the runway we need to really scale up um, and to size up and, and to do more. So.